Hi, this is Rachel from thehealthyroom.com and this episode is about high heels and womb health. So this week, in fact two days ago in the newspapers, it was reported that a woman was sent home for not wearing high heels um, to work and this has caused quite a furore in the media and a lot of people are saying why should women be expected to wear high heels as part of dress code, would men be expected to do that, especially if it's a job where you're on your feet for eight or nine hours a day, because I don't know if anyone watching this knows that's pretty horrendous if you're stood up wearing high heels all day long, it can be quite painful for some women. Uh, but the result is there has been a petition to the UK government on the Parliament website and it's hit over a thousand signatures, which means that it will be debated in the House of Commons and the petition is to pass a law making it illegal for um, employers to require women to wear high heels. So I don't know the ins and outs of the story, I wasn't there. Um, but it's a really interesting point and it's brought up quite a lot of interesting conversations. So first of all, I'm going to say if anyone wants to wear high heels to work, the choice is still there and I don't think this petition is there to stop women wearing high heels from work, it's just meaning that it cannot be enforced. But I really wanted to focus on how wearing high heels all day every day can affect some women. So some women um, will just tell you flat out it hurts their back, it hurts their feet, or the pressure on one part of their foot, it can mean that they go to bed with burning feet. I used to suffer this when I had to wear high heels all day and I was standing up. Um, but particularly, I want to talk about how it affects period pain. So we've got a lovely little model womb here. Now, she should normally be, and it is sideways on, slightly forwards. Her fallopian tubes are usually up around the back here. Fallopian tubes aren't actually connected to the ovaries, just in this model they are. Um, and then in front you have the bladder, so she should be nestling safely across the bladder. Then behind you have the rectum and then the spine. Women who wear high heels a lot, um, and also women who are stuck, sat down all day at a desk, tend to have and this is in my experience and the experience of many other fertility massage therapists. It's not scientifically proven or anything, it's just purely based on my experience. They tend to have a womb that is retroverted. This means that instead of the slightly forward position, she's leaning backwards. So she's pressing against the rectum and she's pressing against the spine. And most of the month that is fine, it doesn't have any symptoms. However, when your womb is at its most full and you're about to have your period and the first few days of your period, the pressure against the rectum can cause changes in bowel movements. So this could be that you're getting um, a bit of constipation. It usually starts off with constipation. And then your bowel starts spasming, so you get a bit of pain, and then you get diarrhoea. So I have so many women saying to me, oh, I get IBS around my period, and that's usually what it is. The room is a bit more swollen and a bit too far back and it's pressing against the bowel. It can also happen if she's leaning quite far to one side or the other and if in some women the bowel decides it's kind of this shape where the flaps are at the bottom, uh, she could be pressing against those two but that's another story. So that's one thing that can happen or you can get the pencil thin poop coming out as well. The other thing that can happen is when she's quite far back so she can be very retroverted or even retroflexed where it comes out like that. Um, this presses on the, bow, the rectum and the spine. The result of this is that instead of um, pain-free periods, which is the norm, what it should be, when you are pressing against that part of the spine, you can get pain in the lower back, you can get pain or numbness radiating down one or both of the legs, or even just a tingling sensation. You can even get menstrual migraines from this. So that's when she's leaning too far back. The other thing that can happen is, if the woman's in a really sort of upright position, or if there's no adhesions holding her in place, adhesions are scar tissues that are quite gluey, uh, it's common with endometriosis and a number of other pelvic conditions. But if you've got adhesions 
holding her in place. She can't move freely to get upright. And when she wants to empty the period out, she wants to be upright. Now, usually she can do this pumping action to help get the blood out. So this kind of action means that the blood is being pumped out, gravity helps. If she's in this extreme retroversed or even retroflex position, instead of the blood flowing out through the cervix, some of it comes back and it pools. And if you imagine when you're cooking and you're cooking a sauce and you're cooking out the water, uh, the sauce gets thicker and condenses. So this is where the endometrium does a similar thing. The water comes out, but obviously it's pooling and it becomes impacted. And this means that you get that dark, icky stuff either at the beginning or the end of your period. Um, and that can be pretty gross if you see it, but that's usually what it is. That can also happen if she's too far forwards as well. Just trying to get the camera angle right here. So that can happen too. The other thing as well with cramps, cramps can have several causes, some being biochemical, but also if your womb is adhered into this backwards position and she can't get upright to empty, she has to start twisting and sometimes quite violently just to get that blood out to do her job properly. And that can cause really painful twinges and cramps. Um, and if you're someone that suffers from these, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It can also impact your fertility because you're not getting as much blood flow into the area because it's all congested. So a number of my clients, and it's not just one thing, but high heels are one of the things that can contribute. We look at, are they sitting all day? Are they moving? What's their posture like? And if they're wearing high heels, I usually get them to try flatter shoes for a while. Um, and in some women it has to be really gradual because they've damaged their hamstrings from wearing high heels too. So there's a number of things you can do if you're one of these ladies. One is wearing flat shoes. Um, obviously, if you've got arch problems, you need something with a support inside. But certainly consider wearing flat shoes, making sure that you're moving throughout the day and that you're not stagnant. Um, and if you're sat down all day, then you really do need to get movement into your pelvis. Castor oil packs and womb seams are wonderful. If you go to my website, which is thehealthywomb.com, Go to free stuff, you can um, get the instructions for that sent into your inbox. I also have a Facebook group called Healthy Wing, which you can join, and there's some videos in there on how to get better womb health. Going back to the petition, as I said, high heels are one of the things that can have an impact on womb health. Different people have different things that impact what's going on with their womb and their periods, and usually it's a number of things that impact it, and you have to look at their posture when they're standing, are they sitting all day, are they moving all day, what are they eating. Um, abdominal massage can be really helpful, nutrition again can be really helpful. So it's something that's really important that women have a choice over because some women can wear high heels, they can wear them for years, they'll never have any problems and that's absolutely fine and I'm really happy for them. And you know, if you feel good and it makes you feel really good about your appearance, because they can make your legs look pretty amazing, um, then go ahead and wear them. But this petition is about giving women the choice, and meaning that women who have back problems and pelvic pain aren't being forced to wear footwear that could be contributing to that at work. So that's why it's important. So below is the link. If you're a UK citizen based in the UK, I think you can sign the petition. Um... You do need to provide evidence of by, I think it's filling in your postcode when I filled it in. Um, it's got over enough signatures now for it to be debated in Parliament, but for people to realise how important this issue is, obviously the more signatures, the better. So if you haven't signed yet, but this is something that's um, really sort of connecting to something in you, I would encourage you to do so, and I'll leave all the links in the comments below. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.